Hello, I'm Mayor Kevin Davis. Welcome to Hardin County. We are celebrating our bicentennial year, our 200th anniversary. As you hear from historians, we hope that you will learn and enjoy more about Hardin County. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, early development of Hardin County. Of course, we can't uh, talk about Hardin County without starting with Colonel Joseph Hardin. He was uh, born in 1734 in Virginia, and uh, of course he died later in Tennessee in 1801. But uh, Colonel Hardin and uh, his twin sons, John and Joseph Jr., participated uh, in the Revolutionary War. And as a result of their service, they were awarded uh, land grants uh, that uh, were, were made in Hardin County. Uh, they uh, chose land in the future Hardin County in Tennessee. Of course, they fought for North Carolina. Colonel Hardin uh, had 3,000 acre grant and the two uh, sons had 1,000 acres each. And uh, uh, Colonel, Colonel Hardin's 3,000 acres was located here where Savannah is. Savannah sits in the western uh, center uh, of that 3,000 acres. And the sons, Joseph and John, had 1,000 acres each that sat on the either side of Horse Creek where it runs into the Tennessee River at what is now called Sarah Gorda. That is the reason, of course, that uh, the county is named Hardin. It, it's named for Colonel Joseph Hardin. And uh, there were Indian, Indian treaties that uh, were made uh, in 1806 and 1816 and 1818 that opened up this land in this area. Before that time, it, people were not allowed to settle in this area until those treaties were made. And the 1806 treaty opened up Middle Tennessee over to the Tennessee River, and uh, the Cherokees and the Chickasaws were the participants in that treaty. And they gave up their land with the exception of a little corner in the southwest corner uh, that the Chickasaws were still claiming. Uh, so a second treaty with Chickasaw Indians was made in 1816, which opened this area for settlement. As a result of that treaty, uh, the uh, Hardins uh, decided to move to, to this part of the country, uh, to this land. They lived in Knox County and Roan County. And uh, in 1816, a 22 family members basically uh, made the trip to this area. There were 22 people who came over land. Uh, I'm sure they had oxen pulling uh, wagons and uh, carts and that type thing and they drove their livestock with them. Uh, two weeks after they left, which was in uh, May of, uh, of 1816, a flatboat left with four other members of the party. They were bringing a year's provisions down the river. Well, they reached uh, Hardin County first. They, they left two weeks late, but they, they got here before the, the land party. But they all got together in July of 1816, and about a mile upstream, uh, from the Tennessee River on Hardin's Creek. And uh, they uh, built a, a rude cabin there, which was the first house in Hardin County. Of course, there were other houses. Native Americans had houses in Hardin County be long before uh, these people came, but uh, history books will say that was the first uh, house would be at uh, Dr. John B. Alton Springs, which was on Hardin's Creek. The first shop came the year later. Uh, Jonathan Courtney moved into the area in 1817 and he opened a blacksmith, shoe, and carpenter shop. 
and it was located on Indian Creek uh, in a community that today is called Crossroads. And a lot of the early activity occurred around Crossroads because it was a, a place about four miles from James Harden's house and it was on the river, on, excuse me, it was on Indian Creek where we had water power, the closest place, the convenient place. And it was also on the first road that was built in Hardin County, which was cleared from James Harden's house to Clifton, or uh, it was Carrollville at the time, but it's near Clifton today. All right, in 1817, uh, there was an attempt to establish a county in this area. It included all the area west of Lawrence County, and it came to the Tennessee River, uh, it included East Hart. Uh, 200 people, 200 citizens, over the men over the age of 21, uh, were allowed to sign a petition to form this county, and it was presented to the state. <clears throat> the uh, state legislature voted on it. It was approved. All we liked was the signature of the uh, Speaker of the House. I guess that would be the person. Well, politics apparently got involved. He never signed the bill, so it did not become law. Uh, Wayne County did not exist. Uh, of course, at the time they figured out that they didn't have a county, uh, the third uh, treaty with the Chickasaw Indians gave us West Tennessee. It was called the Great Chickasaw Session. And it, it opened up West Tennessee for settlement. So this allowed Wayne County to form a, a constitutional county of 625 square miles, much the same as it is today. And it allowed Hardin County to reach across the Tennessee River and pick up enough land to make a second constitutional county, which they did. Uh, the, this was done in uh, Wayne County became a law in uh, October of uh, 1819, and Hardin County became law on the 13th of uh, November, 1819. There was only one thing that was wrong with this, I guess you might say. When they made the description of Hart County, they extended the boundaries, the north and south boundaries, all the way to the Mississippi River. Of course, this was, a, this was another political ploy of some sort. Uh, Andrew Jackson and uh, General Coffey and uh, some others on the land uh, at Chickasaw Bluffs and they needed some means to develop a county over there and uh, apparently the easiest way to do it is to cut it off of another county. So they, when they writ, wrote the description of uh, Hardin County, they, they extended the lines all the way to the river and 11 days after Hardin County was formed, Shelby County was formed. and. The next uh, meeting of the legislature, they redefined the Hardin County boundaries much as they are today. In 1819, and this was a few months before the county was formed, <clears throat> the first post office called Hardinsville was established at James Hardin's residence at what is today Sarah Gordon. In 1820, uh, a group of citizens got together at the house of uh, James Harden to form a court of pleas and quarter sessions. And the first members of the court were James Harden, who was, he was appointed county court clerk. Daniel Smith was appointed sheriff. Samuel Harbor, Harbor James Barnes, David Kincannon, Isom Cherry, and Joseph McMahon were elected the quorum court to serve for one year. The constables elected were Louis Fortner, Elisha Smith, James Steele, John Williams, and Shelton Smith. 
The following day, the remaining officers were elected. Henry Mayer, R Ranger, Joseph McMahon, Trustee, James Barnes, Register, Stephen Roach, Coroner, and Isom Cherry was Chairman of the Court. Uh, one, one political figure that I noticed was not on the court was David Robinson, but a few, uh, sometime later, he was first appointed on the uh, Education Commission. He was one of the first commissioners of education. And he was also one of the political leaders uh, in the county. We had the Hardin Party, which was headed by James Hardin. We had the Robinson Party, which was headed by David Robinson, who was reportedly one of the richest people in the county. Okay, in 1820, we also had the first water mill built, the grist mill. It was built on the Indian Creek uh, at near the Carrollville Ford of Indian Creek, which was on the first road that was built between Saragorda and Clifton, basically. And it was at the place today that is called Crossroads again. It was at, uh, okay, the first merchant came to Hardin County in 1821. That was Lewis H. Broyles. And uh, he arrived here from Greene County, Tennessee with a, a load of merchandise on a boat. And uh, he stopped at uh, what is now Sarah Gorda and James, Hard at James Hardin's residence and built a store there and opened the first uh, store for business in the county. In 1822, James Harden was, uh, was accused of withholding state funds and was removed from office. Uh, he appealed and kept his office until the end of the term, but was permanently relieved of his duties at that time. He and his bondsmen, who were his brothers, are made to repay the missing funds with the penalty and interest, etc. Uh, we run into that all the time. Anyway, when he was kicked out of the county court, he apparently kicked the county court out of his house. So, in 1822, a committee was appointed to search for a permanent location for a new county seat. Uh, they found a place which was close to the geographic center uh, of the county. It's where Turkey Creek and Boone Creeks run together, kind of in the center of the county. Today it's called Old Town, but in 1822, the county court first met there in July of that year, uh, and the name Old Town was moved as well. So our second old town, <laughs> our second county court uh, met at Hardinsville, which is now called Old Town. David Robson was instrumental in uh, buying the land and uh, getting the land for the county. Uh, they got 50 acres. They bought 50 acres from uh, an individual, and uh, and then it was uh, sold to the county. Okay, the first cotton gin uh, was built in 1822. It was a water powered water powered gin, run by a man named uh, Harrison Tompkins, and it was on Whitlow Creek near the Carrollville Ford of Indian Creek, as I mentioned before. And the first <clears throat> horse powered mill cotton gin was built uh, at the same year nearby the same place by Tom and ha Thomas Hammonds. Uh, it was also near Whitlow Creek, uh, and it, which was named for Henderson Whitlow, who was a miller and a ginman, and who came into the area in 1818 before it was a county. All right, the first surveyor came to Hardin County in 1822. His name was Alexander McClintock, so he did a lot of the early surveying in Hardin County. Uh, I'm sure he did the 50 acres for the new town of Hardinsville uh, on Turkey Creek and Boone Creeks. In 1823, Lewis Broyles 
he moved his mercantile business from uh, Sarah Gorda to Hardinsville. Uh, Joseph Kendall moved in and built a hotel at the place, uh, Elix. Alexander Sweeney opened a saddle shop. James Bowman <clears throat> opened a hatter shop. James Scott started a law practice. Joseph Buckingham bought a lot. Gabriel Aids bought a lot. William Sloan bought a lot. And Amos Harden, a brother of James, bought a lot. Uh, and construction was soon begun on a, a courthouse and a jail at that location. The first school was built in 1824 near the Carrollville Ford at Crossroads. The first teacher was Thomas Stockton. Uh, the first church was also built there and it was a 18 by 18 log structure. And the first uh, uh, minister was a Baptist named Charles Riddle. Uh, and that was, that occurred in 1825. Okay, in uh, 1824, the uh, merchants and the people of in the new county seat of Hardinsville, near Turkey Creek and Boone Creek, they realized that they were too far from the Tennessee River and it was uh, not convenient for the people on the west side of the river to get to the county seat to vote or whatever they needed to do to meet in court. So the uh, members of the, of the town, they, uh, submitted a petition to the state of Tennessee to get the county seat moved to the Tennessee River. So the state agreed to do that. They appointed a commission uh, from other counties to come and locate the county, the new county seat on the river. Uh, some of the likely places uh, that they would look at would be uh, the Sarah Gorda where James Harden lived. Uh, there's not many other good places on the river for a county seat that would be have good access to the river and and still be ab above the uh, flood level. So the site chosen uh, was where the uh, old stage road crossed the uh, Tennessee River uh, at uh, Rudd's Ferry. Um, Rudd, James Rudd, was a was a man of color who lived on the Tennessee River in 1820. He lived there in 1820, 1821. He was uh, he was allowed to operate a ferry there, which which he did for several years. But anyway, that site was uh, chosen for the new town, and uh, it, as I have said earlier, I think that it, it's located in the center of the western end of the 3,000 acre military land grant that uh, belonged to Colonel Joseph Harden. Realizing that uh, this place was likely going to be chosen as the county seat, the James Harden and his brothers who had lawsuits and problems with funds and were not in good financial shape. <clears throat> They claim the 3,000 acre grant on the grounds that uh, the agent who sold the property to John Irwin in 1896 did not have the power attorney to do so. So John Irwin uh, was forced to take the Hardens to court. They went to federal court in uh, Columbia, Tennessee. And of course, the Harden boys really didn't have much of a leg to stand on. And uh, uh, John um, Irwin uh, was the winner of the court's lawsuit. The state gave the Harden boys a right to appeal if they chose to do so, and they did not. And by 1826, all of the Harden boys had either moved out of the county or they had died. Uh, Joseph 
uh, James Harden and Gibson Harden both died in 1826. Uh, Joseph Harden Jr., he moved to Arkansas in 1825 and he died that year. Uh, Benjamin Harden, who was the first sheriff of Wayne County and also a state representative representing Harden and Wayne County, he moved to Texas in 18 and, and that year and died in 1845. He was also the great great grandfather of John Wesley Harden, by the way. Amos Harden moved back to Knox County to the to the old home place, and he died in 1840. And then the youngest son, Robert, uh, moved to Marshall County, where he died in 1867. So by uh, 1826, the only Hardens we had left were some of the family of uh, Gibson Harden, and they lived down on Hardens Creek. And, some of them still live around this area today. All right, in uh, 1825, uh, John Irwin won his lawsuits against the Hardin boys, and the state also approved the move to the Tennessee River uh, at that time. Uh, John, the Irwin family gave 50 acres uh, to the uh, new town of Hardinsville, is the third location for Hardinsville. They gave the 50 acres in exchange for two prime lots in the town. And at the same time, David Robinson gave the land for the uh, courthouse, uh, which is on Court Square today. Uh, there was a problem. John Irwin, needless to say, did not like the name Hardinsville. He had to go to court just to keep his property. He wanted to change the name and call it uh, Chambersburg or Shippensburg. Those were two towns in uh, Pennsylvania where his family lived, and that were his choices. Well, everybody didn't like those names, and it's understandable, I guess. Some wanted to keep Hardinsville because it had been our county seat now for several years. So uh, the, uh, they finally got together and uh, David Robinson's wife suggested to call it Savannah. And uh, some people have suggested that that was the town where she was born, but she was not born there. Their, their family lived on the Savannah River about 135 miles upstream from Savannah, Georgia, and she was actually born in Natchez, Mississippi, or in that area. So, anyway, they all agreed on the Savannah as for the new uh, county seat. The name changed, and the town laid out in the 50 acres into about, I believe there are 98 lots in the, in the new town. Uh, in 1918, excuse me, 1828, Lewis Broyles and John Kendall moved their operations to the to the new town of Savannah, and the uh, other businesses uh, they also moved. The Lewis Broyles bought the, the old town. He bought the from the old town from the county. He bought the old city of Hardinsville. I'll get that out in a minute. He also bought all of the land around it and he used the uh, courthouse that was in existence there as a general store which was continued as a store until the 1920s when it was finally torn down. Uh, I have a picture but it was gone before I was born. I don't remember it ever being there. All right, the first county court finally moved to Savannah in uh, 1829, and we have had uh, three uh, county sites, three uh, locations for a county seat, and we've had 18 courthouses over the period of one kind or another, starting at James Harden's residence and ending uh, 
with the brick courthouse that we have there, the nice courthouse we have today.